Cloud chambers are a convenient way to be able to see the trails of radioactive particles. As we know, radiation, it can't be uh, sensed with normal human senses, and so cloud chamber is a way that you can see that. And we're going to take a look at a cloud chamber today. What I have is a container that has a darkened interior surface. It's sitting on a block of dry ice, and inside I have ethyl alcohol, although some prefer isopropyl, so that we get a supersaturated uh, atmosphere inside of there. Let's take a look at the cloud chamber trails, and then we'll come back and talk some of the theories. So if we would have the lights down, and we shine the light in from the side, and what you will see inside of the interior of that are tiny little wisps of vapors that are freezing on the tracks of where the radiation particles are moving through there. So in a sense, this is like a miniature jet contrail. These are condensation trails that are caused by ionizing radiation traveling through the air inside of the chamber. And as the air travels, excuse me, as the radiation travels through there, it ionizes the air particles. And then the supersaturated, very, very cold alcohol vapor freezes on those ions they provide a nucleation site, and then for just a fleeting moment, we see the presence and the track of those radiation particles in there. In this, you should be able to see some of them that go straight, perhaps some that curve, some that may be a bit thicker than others, and some a bit thinner. There's a variety of radiations that we may find inside of there. This is an unusually good cloud chamber. Uh, it, and the conditions are just right inside of there to be able to see these things. Have we got enough of that? Okay. Now, let's go to the board, and we'll take a look for just a moment at what's taking place. We need a radiation source, and the radiation source that we're using for the cloud chamber is a lantern mantle like you might use for cooking, uh, excuse me, for camping. Typically, they have some of them, not all of them, but some lantern mantles will have thorium-232, which is the most common of the radioactive thorium isotopes that would be present. It undergoes an alpha decay process, and when it gives off an alpha particle, it produces radium-228. That radium-228 is a daughter cell, then undergoes a beta decay, giving off the beta particle that we have here, and it forms actinium-228. So we have both alpha and beta particles that are likely present in there, and there's likely some background radiation that we get. Uh, if you look back at the video, you may see some of the trails that are coming from sources other than the lantern mantle. Now, cloud chambers have a very bad reputation of not working well. The conditions are a little bit tricky, and so let's talk through about some things that you would want to do if you were going to try to do this for yourself. First of all, I would rarely set up just one cloud chamber. I would have two or three at a minimum set up. When I do this with my students, I typically set up four cloud chambers, and three, two to three of them will typically give me some good results. It is important that you completely saturate the cloud chamber uh, itself with alcohol uh, so that you have a, a large excess of alcohol inside of there. Then these cloud chambers must cool for a few moments on the dry ice, and then you will begin to get your vapor formation. At times, if you have difficulty, it may be that the cloud chamber has become too cold. And at that point, what you may want to do is to place the palm of your hand on top of the cloud chamber so that you briefly warm the surface and allow some of that alcohol vapor, which is perhaps beginning to freeze, to thaw out a little bit. Sometimes you will get some condensation inside, and you can work through that just by kind of wiping off the surface. The cloud chambers can get too cold, so there's going to be a happy medium between having the alcohol cold enough that it becomes super saturated and yet not so cold that it freezes and you don't get the, the, uh, the atmosphere that you wanted there with the, with the vapor trails. Uh, students are fascinated with this. It doesn't take a long time to set it up. And it is one of the few ways, in fact, it was the first way that we could visualize radiation. And so it's a historic uh, experiment, as well as being one that is uh, relatively easy for students to visualize those radiation particles inside of there. So please don't be afraid of cloud chambers. They have a bad reputation, but if you play with them a little bit and get the conditions right, it's an experiment that's well worth its time and effort because it's just visually stunning to be able to see alpha, beta, and sometimes gamma radiations as they move through those chambers.